yeah, so increasing food production, as Ash said, will first of all help making better food, like organic food, free of pesticides and GMOs and other things that are put into our foods, and will bring down the price, bring down the cost. That's important, right? Everyone likes things being a little cheaper, right? Okay, that's a uh, great answer. A bit what she said, but um, I was thinking that it would help uh, poor people afford um, the food and that they won't use chemicals to grow the food. Absolutely. So, in, also, in addition to making food cheaper, we have this ability to make all this food available to people who don't have it. Right? So, thinking outside of the box and being more community oriented. That's, these are fantastic ideas. And you can do it any time of the year. Any time of the year, right? So, you don't just have to do it in summer. August. Now in Canada, that's important, right? Because we get winter, what, six months out of the year? <laughs> and then the rest of it is fall, summer, spring. So we need to be able to maximize food production for ourselves and for other people. Absolutely. And uh, fresh food is a lot better than store-bought food because who knows how long we can save Fresh food. How many people agree with that? That fresh food is better than store-bought food? Uh, mm -hmm. I agree with that. Absolutely. Um, Okay, so that's a really interesting point that it could stop uh, global warming or on a bigger scale, it could help reduce harm to the environment, reduce harm to the ozone layer and, and improve our overall planet. How many people agree with that? Absolutely. Now you have had your hand up? Um, it's bit what, like, it's better and uh, you can grow it any time in the, in the year and it's organic because it, in Canada we have winter and we can't grow anything so we'll have to get imported stuff and they use chemicals to help the imported stuff stay fresh so we can get organic stuff here by using the baby products. Absolutely, yeah, these are all great ideas. Uh, I think it also helps reduce pollution. Help increase? Help reduce. Reduce pollution, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Sorry, you don't. Just a few more? Uh, I think it would increase the amount of people, like a lot of people can't have gluten or they can't have certain things that have certain chemicals. So increase the amount of food that those people so safer, healthier foods for everyone, right? Perfect. Yeah, it helps to reduce the amount of, that's a good one, it reduces the amount of garbage that goes in the landfills because we're reusing parts a lot longer until they, they degrade, absolutely. And also, like, since it would get cheaper, more people will put it like using the food bank or other donations. Absolutely, so donations, so all, all really, really good things. Now the beauty about hydroponics or 3D ponics for the future is that, well first of all, we believe that 3D printers, although they're very expensive now, I remember someone saying that earlier, they're not going to be very expensive in the future. I remember, oh boy, 20 something years ago when uh, my family got our first printer at home, it was an old dot matrix printer. Does anyone remember dot matrix printers? It, you couldn't do images, so think about that. You couldn't print the, you know, digital images. It was long, it did one thing at a time. You could only do ASCII characters. It was terrible. It was this big, it cost a lot. The print, the ink in the printer cost even more. And it was terrible. <laughs> Five years later, they started rolling out with inkjet printers and it started becoming more and more affordable. The quality started getting better and better. And now you could pretty much print anything right out of your car if you wanted to. So there's add-ons that you could plug right into your your, uh, your cigarette lighter component. I mean, it's it's excellent. So what we see is that we see that 3D printers are going through that same process. Right now they're big, they're expensive, they're slow, they're kind of clunky, but they still work. And in five, ten years from now, they're going to get smaller, cheaper, and way better. Which means that all of us at home could print parts, parts that we need, which will mean it's less uh, money for us to spend at stores, we're becoming more reliant on ourselves, we're becoming more reliant on technology and on designing and on thinking outside the box. 
And I see that not being a problem for you guys whatsoever. And then the next big thing about 3D Ponics is being able to be in control of the food that you grow, right? And being able to grow food yourself at virtually no cost. So that's a question. How much do you guys think it costs to run one 3D Ponics system? So one system like this. How much do you think it costs to run every month? Please discuss it amongst yourselves and come back with the price. Five dollars too. Just say, depending on the size. Like I know, like if we use like all well, these, well, if you think about how much it's going to be, it's really cheap. Or if you 